This game has got to be one of the most difficult NES games that I've played. And while I first played this title over many moons ago, I never had a chance nor the patience to beat this as a kid. Nowadays, I'm not an expert at the game or anything like that, but I have a few tricks that can help out the next person who might want to take a shot at beating Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for the NES. With that being said, let's get started. Before we start our journey, let us first take a look at the control scheme for this game. To walk, press left or right on the D-pad. To crouch, press and hold down on the D-pad. Crouching is very useful. Use it to dodge enemies and their projectiles. Press the B button to attack. To do an upward strike. Press up and the B button. To do a crouching attack, press and hold down plus the B button. Also, you can jump and attack at the same time. To jump, press the A button. Use the jump to reach higher places and in some cases to avoid the enemy. In order to do what I call a hop jump, lightly press the A button. The hop jump is very necessary, especially in area three. Remember that the jump function is just as important as attacking. Along the way, there's weapons you can obtain after defeating enemies. Once you get the weapon, make sure to press the select button to activate or select it. Remember that each item collected will give you 20 of that item. This item will allow the turtles to throw a single shuriken at the enemy. This is the most basic throwing weapon. This item will let the turtles throw three shurikens instead of one in a spread shot. This item is definitely more effective than a basic shuriken. The boomerang is a great mid-range projectile since it doesn't travel full screen. In fact, this will come back allowing the player to grab it and use it again. From my understanding, this weapon is never dropped from an enemy and it can only be found in areas 3, 5, and 6. The Kai projectile take off a whopping 2 bars of health from the enemy. With its full screen range and its offensive capabilities, the Kai Scroll is the strongest sub weapon in the game. Health Items This gives the player 2 units of health back. This will give the player 4 units of health back. This will give the turtles all of their health back. Other Items This item is found in Area 3 and 4 but only required in Area 4. The rope item allows the turtles to cross over large gaps in Area 4. This item will let the turtles shoot missiles from the turtle van. These are only found in Area 3. This is probably the rarest item in the entire game. This item will make the turtles invincible for a limited amount of time. So I believe that covers most of the game mechanics for now. So, we start area 1 in the overworld, enter the sewer at the left, take out the Mausers and continue to the right. At this point, just take your time and get used to the controls and feel of the game. Try your best to learn the enemy placement in every area, and unfortunately, this game suffers the same enemy respawning over and over like the NES is known for. Make sure to crouch under the foot soldier shurikens and hit him twice to take him out. Leonardo is a great turtle to start with, but make no mistake about it, 
Donatello is the MVP of this game. Now I take out the last two foot soldiers and grab the piece of slice and make an exit. From here, let's head to the next sewer entrance at the right. So now we have more Mausers and flying enemies to deal with. Once you get rid of them all, head to the right. Keep going to the right. Take out all enemies in your path, including the flying ones, which will sometimes drop a weapon item upon defeat. When you reach the end of this section, prepare for a boss fight with Bebop. Now switch to Donatello and use his range and power to put down Bebop. Now that we're on the other side of the water, we have a few more places to visit. This building is completely optional and you can save time by skipping past it. So let's continue to the north. A little further up are two sewer entrance. Bypass the first one and let's head to the second. In this area, we need to head to the left. Also, grab as many pizza slices as you need to by entering and exiting the level. Now take out this guy from below then keep going to the left. This area houses the Frogman mid boss. Quickly take him out then keep heading left to exit the level. The flame man can be a bit of a pain at times, but the key with them is to keep your distance if possible, then take them out. This is the building we needed to get to. Go inside and let's get ready to save April. In this final area of area one, Take out the flying insect looking enemies before proceeding. Sir Donatello is a gentleman for this job. Now go to the right. Make sure to stay on top of the treadmill and take out the enemies from above. Use Donatello range with his bow staff. On the second floor, take out the boomerang throwing bad guy before he gets too close. Now let's head all the way to the left. Before the battle begins, quickly go to the right and hop on top of the crates. Now from this height, Rocksteady won't be able to hit you, but you will be able to hit him with a downwards attack. Continue to do so until he's defeated. Now with Rocksteady's defeat, April is saved and it's time to move on to Area 2. <laughs> 